Today I will be making a voxel engine, or at least attempting to. For those who don't know, a voxel engine is just a bunch of cubes. Too many to be honest. A good example of a voxel game is Minecraft, so I guess I will be making something similar to that, but not exactly. And before we begin, please subscribe, it really helps out the channel and if you like videos like this one, then this channel is for you. So the API that I will be using for this project is OpenGL. I used it in my last video, but turns out I used a really old version. So this time around I will use the most up to date one. With everything set up, let's test it out. <sighs> let's try that again. There we go. So for those who don't know what an API is, basically it's like a collection of different commands, functions, and just generally code that we can then use in our project to, well, make the development of it easier. In terms of OpenGL, it's a graphical API, so it specializes in graphic stuff and helps us, for instance, render things onto the screen, among other stuff. The final part of the setup is to create a window. So let's just do this, give it a name, and bam, window complete. Okay, so stage two is rendering a voxel. Now, a voxel is something that represents a value on a regular grid in three-dimensional space as with pixels in a 2D bit... Uh, huh? A cube. It's a cube. Now, to render this so-called cube, we can either create an object loader, open up Blender, use the default cube exporter, make our program read it, and then render it. But that's really inefficient. So instead, we can deconstruct our cube into numeric values called indices and vertices. Think of vertices as the corners or points of a 3D shape, like a cube. And indices are like instructions that tell the computer how to connect the vertices to form the faces of the cube. Anyways, essentially we create this data and then use OpenGL to draw it onto the screen. So now when I press play, we should have a voxel. And look! We don't. Okay. So it should work this time. There we go. I ended up having to move the camera because the cube basically was out of view, so it was working beforehand, I was just being a little bit dumb. Alright, so before moving any further, I wanted to implement some basic UI so that everything wasn't being hard-coded. I ended up using imgui, 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 this thing. And after initializing it and setting up some basic UI, we have this. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by GameMaker. For anyone out of the loop, GameMaker is a game engine, and it's actually the first engine I ever used on this channel. GameMaker is a 2D game engine, which is great for both beginners and more advanced users, because it allows you to either create your logic with just code or drag and drop. Something that I really enjoy is the built-in sprite editor. You basically can use this to draw your own sprites or create animations without the need for any external software. And even if you decide to create your art using an external software, you can still import it back into GameMaker and use that sprite editor to edit your art. Now with GameMaker, you can export your games to either PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, DX Games and Steam, and of course you can also make a standalone PC build. The engine is also capable of making single player, multiplayer or co-op games, it doesn't really matter because GameMaker is very flexible and it's up to you how you decide to use it. Anyways, if this sounds like something you might want to try, then check out the link in the description, it'll be the first thing. I highly recommend you just give it a trial. I used it before on my games and it's what actually got me into game development so I can't recommend it enough. By the way, all those games just shown were created using GameMaker, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now let's move on. Okay, so rendering one voxel is great, but we need more. So let's just copy and paste. And look, now we have more voxels. Okay, so this is actually a horrible way to go about it. Obviously, copy and pasting the same line of code over and over again is not very efficient. Now, even if I decide to chuck this code in a for loop, there is still a major problem. Right now, we are working in a small scale, only rendering a couple of voxels. But in reality, this engine will need to be capable of rendering voxels indefinitely in the X, Y, and Z axes. Using the current system, if we were to let's say render a thousand cubes, we would start to see the entire engine lag. Because right now we are doing a render call for every single voxel. This is bad for the record. 
So what we need to do is reduce the number of render calls we are making, but we still want to render a lot of voxels. So to solve this conundrum, we can use something called chunks. If any of you have ever played Minecraft, you have probably heard this term before. But essentially, it's a method to bundle up several voxels together while only making one render call. And at any point, if we want more voxels, we can simply create more chunks. This is the finished product. This 2x2x2 grid you're seeing here is actually only one chunk and uses one render call. With some added extra UI, I can also specify the size of the chunk, both in the X, Y, and Z axes. Okay, so right now the engine is looking like this, but we want it to look like that. So to accomplish that, we can use something called noise maps. This is a noise map, and each pixel in this noise map will have a value ranging from 0 to 1. The value itself is determined based on how dark slash light the pixel is. So the lightest parts have a value of 0 and the darkest have a value of 1. We can then create a bunch of chunks until we have an equivalent amount of pixels to voxels ratio, aka a flat plane. Then we can simply just go through the noise map pixels one by one, grab the value and assign that value as the Y position of the voxel. Ending up with, well, this actually. We can also play around with what type of noise map we are using, such as Perlin, Cellular, 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 etc. Anyways, the different type of noise map will basically generate a different type of look. So, another feature that I need to add is some variety in voxel colours. I mean, look at this, it's kind of boring at the moment. So for this, I created a block type enum, where I can add different types of blocks, such as grass, dirt, sand, and whatever else. I then use this RGB colour picker to find some colours, and within my voxel code, based on its type, a different colour will be assigned in the shader. But if I press play, nothing happens. And that actually makes sense, because currently all the blocks are the same type, which is just default. So we need a way to assign different block types. I could do this randomly, but since we already have a noise map being used, we might as well assign different block types to different height values. Which results in something more natural looking like this. Okay, so a staple feature in most voxel games is procedural generation. This is not only going to be cool, but it's also going to let us create massive worlds without too much lag. So currently I am storing all my created chunks in a vector, and we can use this. We can simply set a cap on how many chunks we are allowed to have at once, let's say 4, then we render those 4 chunks. We can also store which chunk I am currently staying in, and with this information, once I move into a new chunk, we can simply unload certain chunks around me, that are no longer in range, and load new ones up ahead. But we also need a way to store all the created chunks, so that when I re-enter an area that I was already in, we load the same voxels in the same positions. For this, I will use a dictionary to store all the chunks we create and simply load slash unload them from there. Another feature that needs to be added, and by needs to, I mean, I already added it, is a way to manage our voxels, because rendering individual cubes for each voxel is actually really inefficient. So we need to optimize the voxel meshes. Firstly, we only want to render the voxels that are up in the surface and aren't being covered by anything. So for this we can check the neighbouring voxels and check if a particular voxel is being covered, and if so, we just deactivate it. We can also use the same approach for the faces of the voxel, and only render the faces that aren't being blocked by another voxel. With this, the world is much more efficient. The last big feature that I will be adding is the ability to place blocks slash structures. So firstly, let's make it possible for the application to detect mouse inputs. And then when left click is pressed, we can create a new voxel. Since we have different block types, I will also make it so that using the scroll wheel you can cycle through the different blocks. And display it in the UI so we know which one is currently selected. But I also said I wanted structures, so let's create some. I went ahead and created three types of trees. This is simply multiple voxels placed in a specific way to resemble them. We have palm trees, pine trees, and these autumn fall trees. Now the way the placement currently works is it just grabs the position right in front of me and then places the voxel there. 
But in the future, I think adding a raycast and changing the placement similar to Minecraft will be a good idea. That way we can prevent trees floating in the air. Okay, so this is the end of the video. There is a few other features I added, but I will probably leave them for a part 2 if you guys want, since I don't want to overwhelm the video anymore. But if you enjoyed, please subscribe. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers, and your one click really counts. Also, just to remind you about Game Maker, a link to try it out is in the description below. It's completely free, so give it a go. And if you want a part 2, give this video a like, and I will see you all next time. Bye!